dude this paint thing is killing me i mean in a good way oh yeah killing me dude every time i need to bore paint it i'm like right paint this thing and dude he before i can he's already got it in his hand look at that it's got a magnet on there i mean I can... <laughs> I'm gonna to try to keep it brief here, but what we're trying to accomplish here with our siding is making the bottom of the siding boards line up in a particular location on the windows. Now, it doesn't always work out the way you want it, so what we've done is we've taken a stick and we've laid it out with the spacing that we're using, which is four and an eighth of an inch, four, one eighth. Now, this is gonna be the top piece. If you can see, I want it to go right across the top of that piece of trim. But the problem is my spacing here, so that's on the bottom of the board. Okay, I'm about an inch high, one inch high. Now between all these rows of siding, I can spread that inch out in each one and you really won't be able to discern the difference. Like it'll be just only a 16th out of each one. And instead of doing any complicated math, what I do is I put this stick where I want the top of that to be and then I swing it until it crosses the bottom. Is that about where it goes? That's exactly where it goes. How about that? Now, this is at an angle, so it has changed the absolute vertical spacing. Now, all I do is make a tick mark at each one of these, and that represents the bottom of each piece of siding at a, an altered spacing. And I don't know what it is exactly, and to tell you the truth, I don't really care. All I know is that they are all equally spaced, and I know that the top board will land where I want it to land. That's actually pretty smart. It's an old timer's trick. I don't know who came up with this, but that's what the old timers did. So I hear. Arlo? I believe so, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I believe that was done. So that's uh, one way to do it. Uh, yes. That is yes. one way to do it. <laughs> this board is, uh, let's say five and five A's. So we could kill ourselves trying to figure out what the math of that was. You know, if we're just like old school, we didn't go to school and don't know our division. We just go down here and we put the tape on the diagonal, six inches. Oh wait, half of six is three, right there. And then, oh look, it's really uh, two and 11, or 13 sixteenths. No math, the no math wizard. <laughs> That's a good trick. And we watched this guy and he didn't actually know how to read a tape measure. So he would always like go out there and just pinch his finger on it. Oh. You know, so you build a house without reading a tape measure. Yeah, I know. We, we figured, eventually figured out that he didn't know the fraction, so he just pinched, whatever. Back in my day, we didn't even have tape <laughs> We just nailed boards up however we saw fit. You can see I'm doing something a little bit unusual here on the corner. I have an open corner still right now. And I did that on purpose because I'm gonna go get some trim, some quarter round actually. I'm gonna get some yellow pine, three quarter by three quarter, quarter round. And it's gonna lay, it's gonna lay right in this corner, get caulked in, glued in, shot in, and it'll add kind of a cool old timey detail. It's the same detail that was on my other house across the street in town. And uh, I like it actually. Hey yo, Tippy Long Stockings, come on down. Good job there, Jack Corner. Hello, Jack Corner. The inside corner here is simply a one inch by one inch square piece of wood. It's a piece of decking that's been ripped down to make one little square piece. Here's a piece of the inside corner trim. You can see that right here, I took a bevel off the back inside edge of it. That, that goes into the corner with the, the paper, the wallpaper, uh, like the Tyvek sometimes is pulled in the corners and you can't press a sharp 90 degree corner back in there sometimes. And uh, it would kind of be tipping back and forth. So by beveling off that edge, it allows for that little bit of slack that's in the paper in the corner. And I don't have to cut that paper in the corner because that would sort of defeat the purpose of it. Jason, get back to work. <laughs> get back to work. Yeah, okay. Is that what you guys been doing today? 
but I done roughed in this whole house today. What have you done? You got three boards nailed up. All I saw was a bunch of Bojangles boxes. <laughs> Real good. Uh, we're board back board. in the alley here. We're doing more band boards, more flashing. And look, I even used some aluminum tape. You know what? This job, look, this job is for me, first of all. But you know what? I'm using kind of random products a little bit here. So this is like uh, tape from the heating and air man that I've had for a long time. And it's, it's aluminum tape, you know, it's really sticky. So we're getting our starter strip put up here. Um, the key to getting this starter strip to do what you need it to do is to nail it a little higher than your gap. See our gap here is a uh, one quarter inch gap to the flashing. You can see my starter strip, I've nailed it about a half inch high off the flashing because I don't want it to be visible and I don't want it to ever get wet and so I hold it up just a little bit and then the thickness of it the thickness of it needs to represent the thickness of the overlapping part of the siding or the part that gets covered by the overlap I should say so this piece matches that description and we'll give our first piece of siding the proper kick out angle as if it was just a piece of siding out in the middle of the field make that twice six five eight Cross cut, two, six, five, dash eight, cross cut. That's one way to do it. Hey bud, you got a little squeeze out on the cock there. Is that what you meant to do? Yep, I, don't look at me. <laughs> that was me. That was Macaulay cock. Told me to here. put a nice bed. All right, well there it is folks. You've seen it right here. This is the <laughs> quarter round, <laughs> the quarter round outside corner. Did you shoot all the other things? Yeah. All right, let's do it. No, it's just yellow pine. But so is the rest of the siding, so it's all good. All right, we're getting this seated in here. It's important that it lines up on the bottom. Yeah. Are you good there? Are you good? I'm checking. Look at it. Oh, it looks good. It doesn't get any gooder. It gets, it's, all right. It's, uh, I'm happy. Of course, now you, you can't nail it because your ladder's in the way. Oh, I got it. Well, it's 20th century good. There it is. Straight in the corner, 45. Miter shot. Yep, I like that. Dude, these corners are really cool. Yo! There it is. Well, as if this thing didn't look old enough. It lo looks really old now. Um, I'm playing with the idea here of filling the uh, nail holes with some wood filler here. This is exterior wood filler. And you can say it. You can see it makes kind of a uh, old dark spot at every nail location. So I'm gonna try to paint over one little area here and see if I get good coverage with one coat of paint. If I don't, then I'm gonna try to switch to a different product here that is not dark colored. Got my handy brush. Hey, um, this brush is looking good, right? I mean, it's all right. Tough crowd, tough yeah. crowd. It looks like a normal it's brush one of my favorite use. brushes right here it what needs a little love but uh i'm gonna use this handy little paint thing look at this no fingers required to hold this okay it's called a handy paint pail wow how'd they come up with that anyway i think it's a hand joke but uh anyway works pretty nice for a guy with no fingers all right i'm gonna try this out right here because i want to see if these uh spots are going to get covered or not that's working pretty good there, right? Ooh, I don't know. It's a little halo. I'm putting it on heavy, too. That's way heavy. Let's see what happens if we go a little thinner. I don't want to paint it twice. That's that's the thing. I don't want to paint this whole house twice again. Not yet. That's looking... A, I don't know, man. I'm afraid you're going to see him. And I got a bunch of chunks of stuff in my paint, too, from using this paint pail all day for painting the ends of the boards that we're cutting. But uh, I'm totally good with that because that makes it look a little older, you know, because we tried to use reclaimed wood on the windows when we built the window frames. And this is all brand new. So we got to figure out some way to make it look old. So I can kind of tell that this dark colored putty is not going to cover well with one coat of paint. So I'm just going to real quickly uh, just lay a little coat of paint on all these ones I just did on this area that I'm using as an experiment. And then, uh, so when this thing gets painted again for the final coat, I don't have to worry about coming back and doing this whole area again. I'll just do this real fast right now, take care of it.
Watch this, folks. Wow. Booyah. Cock and paint made a cover. What do you eat? Yo, paint guy. What's up? Oh, I mean, <laughs> now leave it to Ray. He really wasn't kidding about being a painter. He keeps coming up with all these ideas. The problem is he could probably get rid of all this stuff. He doesn't really even use it. <laughs> Eric wouldn't have anything to steal if I got it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm right here, guys. Oh, oh, I forgot he came to work today. Yeah. You gotta be careful. Looks like my little concrete slab turned out okay. I'm happy with that. Although I see a footprint. Who did that? So what happened here is we did stucco up onto the framing here and it kind of sticks up a little bit above the subfloor. And that's a problem because we're getting ready to flash this out and put a door in here. So this is an awesome little bit. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen any like this before. You see that other one that had it on the bottom there, Arlen? Yeah, look at that. This thing is, I don't know, what is it, diamond or carbide? Oh, it's, car it's, it, it's I, it may be, I think it's, I think it's carbide, I think. Anyway, this thing is just chewing off this uh, stucco. Not only is it concrete, like stucco. Oh, it's cutting wire too. Yeah, there's metal lath in there behind it and a layer of rubber um, waterproofing membrane behind it. It's just grinding all that to bits and getting it flushed up. So this will be done in just a sec and we can drop in some flashing. Hey, dude. You called my brother? Yeah, let's see what he did today. What do you think he did today? I'm thinking he watched the drywall guy's mud drywall. Probably. That's pretty hard. Sounds super hard. It's, it's a lot of work. Hard for me to watch Rex. I agree here. Oh, oh, man. Oh, voicemail. voicemail. After two rings. Probably <laughs> screening my calls. It's probably at the lake. Press one for more probably, uh, uh, probably like, Yo, what are you screening my calls? All right here, I've got these Miratech boards. These are the ones I planed down to uh, just below three quarters. These guys are gonna go up against the bottom of the roof. Right there where that dark piece of trim is, all the way up and around. It's gonna be a nice trim detail. All right, I gotta get some <clears throat> video of this here. We just right got a little on. bit to go over top of the window. Yay. That is awesome. And look at this, the bottom boards line up with the bottom of the window. That's amazing. And look at this. We even have a full board that goes across that piece above the porch. Now, how did they do that? Normally, it would just be randomly notched. And but because we're adjusting the spacing of the siding, as we go, as needed, we're able to make it come out in different places. So, way to go, guys, on that. Don't forget to subscribe and like so that we can continue to produce more videos for you to watch. And trust me, there are plenty more videos coming up from this project where we are going to be completing the entire inside of this house with some somewhat unusual methods. So, stay tuned for that. Thank you and take care.